welcome to the HTV Christmas Carol Service. We are so glad that you've joined us. We're here to celebrate what C.S. Lewis described as the central event in the history of the Earth, the very thing the whole story has been about. Let's have a moment of quiet as our service begins. As Christmas approaches, let us with great joy and excitement prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind go to Bethlehem and see this great event and the baby lying in a manger. Let us read again in the scriptures the story of the loving purposes of God from the first day of our disobedience to the glorious redemption brought to us by this child. And let us fill this church and our homes with songs and carols of praise. Let us pray too for the needs of the world, for peace on earth and unity. Let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold and the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and the sad, the lonely and the unloved, the old and the very young, let us offer up these prayers and praises to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger 
because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger.
the angel says to the shepherds that the birth of Jesus is good news that will cause great joy for all the people. I wonder what you're looking forward to this Christmas. I'm really looking forward to hopefully seeing some of my extended family. We've got this huge extended family, but I'm hoping that we might be able to see one or two of them this year. But I think it's going to take a while to get used to kind of greeting people at Christmas. It's been so long since I've seen some of them. You know, do we, do we kind of wave from a distance? Do we offer them an elbow? You know, do we come a bit closer? Maybe for some of the less vulnerable ones, we might dare to shake a hand, maybe even a hug. It's going to take a while to kind of get used to these things. It's difficult enough, even in normal circumstances, A good friend of mine, pre-COVID, was interviewing people for a role at his company. And he has a corner office. And in the corner of his corner office is a door. And it's one of those doors where to get into the door, you almost have to get into the doorway to open up the door. And the candidate knocked on the door, so he went and opened the door like this. But for some reason, he left his hand on the door. And the candidate looked up at him like this. And he said, welcome. And the candidate looked up and was like, this guy wants me to give him a hug. Like, we've just met, this is an interview. Uh, oh, no, this must be a really friendly company, I don't, but I don't want to appear standoffish. He's like, okay. So the candidate kind of lifted up his arms and moved towards him. My friend was like, this candidate wants me to give him a hug. I, I, I never would normally do that, but I, I don't want to appear unfriendly. Okay, so he kind of lifted up his hands like this and they moved towards each other. It's kind of awkward movement. And when they're about a foot away from each other, their eyes met and they suddenly realised, this is a terrible mistake. No one wants a hug, but it was too late. They couldn't pull out, so they just had to kind of gently pat each other on the back. And then they moved on with the interview and they were both so embarrassed. Neither of them mes- mentioned it for the rest of the interview. But fortunately, the guy got the job and they can laugh about it now. But there might be a few moments like that, but it'll be worth it because connection brings joy. In Jesus, God has connected with this world. And that is good news of great joy for all people. Why? How can can a baby born 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away, be good news for me today? How might it cause great joy in my life? Joy is different from happiness. You can be really happy about how things are going in your life and not really feel joyful. You can be really unhappy about how things are going on in your life, but still feel joy. You still feel a lightness, a confidence, a hope, a peace, even a gratitude in the midst of those challenges and those troubles. And that's what I found this year. Beth's mum, Sarah, one of the people I most admired in the world, died of cancer uh, at the start in January of this year. And then as we were grieving that, we moved into, you know, the pandemic hit. And then as we came out of the first lockdown, a car hit, a car literally hit me as I was walking along the pavement. And then after that, I faced some really, really difficult challenges, which have been really hard. And I haven't haven't kind of been happy facing some of those challenges. But in the midst of them, I have experienced real peace. I've had a confidence that I'm not on my own in this world. Even in the midst of those challenges, I've known real joy. And maybe you've had a tough time this year at work. Maybe the relationship you wanted to happen hasn't happened or maybe it did happen and it didn't work out. And and you're longing for joy. Or maybe you've had a great year. You've, You've got the promotion you wanted. You've met someone and you're happy. But you still feel like there's something missing. Maybe without realizing it, you're longing for joy. And I think you can look at the nativity sometimes and you can think, well, well this, what's the relevance of this to me? Like these, all these people with, you know, perfect lives, very holy, gathered around a baby. What relevance has that to me? But even at his birth, Jesus attracted people who didn't have their lives all together, who didn't have it all sorted, who were facing real challenges, who longed for joy. Mary, so vulnerable, so young, exhausted probably after traveling a long distance, facing all the complexity of having a baby as a teenager before she was married in a culture where everyone would have had an opinion about that and about her. Joseph, a young guy, probably probably wondering, confused about how he ended up in in, in a shed, 
with his fiance having a baby that wasn't his, hoping that it would be good news of great joy. The shepherds looked down on by lots of people in society, seen as outsiders, wondering, confused probably, how, how did they, of all the people in the world, get to be invited to the birth of the one who came to save the world? They were willing to kind of leave their sheep in the middle of the night and rush off to try and find this good news of great joy. And when they encountered Jesus, they overflowed with joy. That's what happened to the shepherds 2,000 years ago. And that happens to people today. It happened just a few weeks ago in my Alpha Online group. People filled with joy as they encountered Jesus. And the shepherds, I love about, what I love is the shepherds come empty-handed to see Jesus and they go away you know, with the best gift you could ever wish for, overflowing with joy. I actually know quite a lot about these shepherds because I played one of them in a school nativity play. Uh, there were three shepherds. I was the second shepherd. And in the play, we each had to bring gifts to the baby Jesus. And the first shepherd had to, I know these aren't in the original text, the first shepherd had to bring a sheep. And that's a very valuable present to give to someone, completely useless for a baby, but still. And he kind of had to come and hand over the sheep. Then I had to come second shepherd and bring my cloak and hand it over to keep the baby Jesus warm, very practical. And then the third shepherd came and he didn't have anything to give to the baby Jesus, but he just had to say, I have nothing to give you, but I give you my heart. And that's, that's a pretty good line. That's a pretty good line. So on the big night, we all came up onto the stage, the audience were all there. And the first shepherd came to the baby Jesus and handed over his sheep. And then I came, and then as I reached for my cloak, I realised that in all the excitement, I had left my cloak somewhere off stage and I didn't have it with me. And I looked down at the baby Jesus. I looked out at the audience. I looked back at the third shepherd. I looked back towards the baby Jesus and I said, I have nothing to give you, but I give you my heart the look of hurt on the face of the third shepherd as he stepped forward and said, I have nothing to give you, but I give you my heart. I really hope he's forgiven me by now. But I do need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. I need a saviour. And that's what the name Jesus means. The Lord saves. Jesus came to save. And what I need is not just a good example or an inspiring life. I need a saviour. Jesus came as a baby. God made flesh. He grew up. He lived. He died on a cross and he rose again. And he's alive today. And you can encounter him. It means I can know forgiveness and freedom and hope for eternity and joy. I was a barrister for a number of years and one time I was at a kind of Christmas party and there were a whole load of barristers there and barristers love to party and they love to ask questions. And one of the people I didn't know, this other barrister, and he kind of worked out that I had some kind of faith and he kind of was like slightly pinned me in the corner firing all these different questions at me. And he was saying, you know, why do you, why do you believe this stuff? You know, why, why, why do you need faith? Why, why would I need faith? What difference would it make to my life? How can I know it's true? You know, why is this relevant to me? And after a while, I was kind of fielding all these questions. And I, and I, just, I just thought, well, I, I, I guess Jesus means saviour. I mean, Jesus came to save, to rescue. He said, no one's ever told me that before. And I said, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of what his name means. Jesus came to rescue. And I guess one of the things to ask yourself is, do I, do I, do I ever feel like I might need a rescue? I mean, have you ever felt that way and his eyes went a bit wide and he said yes and I said well well you might be closer than you think and that's what I experienced I I was a barrister I read thousands and thousands of pages of evidence I cross-examined hundreds and hundreds of witnesses and when I read the eyewitness accounts of Jesus life about his life, his death and his resurrection. I thought, these are true. This actually happened. I've encountered Jesus and I've experienced the joy of being completely known and completely loved. And that enables me to be myself 
without fear of rejection or, or trying to put on a mask. Because Jesus knows me to the bottom of my soul. All of the good, all that I'm proud of, all of the things that aren't so good that I'm not proud of. He knows me to the bottom of my soul and yet he loves me to the sky. Jesus knows me in that way. And that means that in all the difficulty of life, in all the challenges that we face, I know that he's with me. It says that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, that he is with us even in the midst of all the challenges and struggles we face. You know, that means, doesn't mean that there's not difficulties. There are difficult days. There are times when I, I, I fear that I can't see a way through the challenges I face, but I know I'm not on my own. I know that Jesus is with me. And he came not to blame us for the things we've got wrong, but to bear those things on his shoulders on the cross. Not to restrict our freedom, but to win us true freedom. And he doesn't just save us from our sins. Wonderful though that is, he saves us for a good purpose, a purpose that will give you great joy. Joy is not something that it's really easy to earn or achieve. It's a gift you receive. And sometimes you think, oh, if I could just be successful in that, or if I could just win that promotion, or if I could just get together with that person, or if I could just earn that much money, if I could just get these things in my life or get rid of those things in my life, then I might be joyful. But joy often eludes those who try to grasp it. Joy isn't something you achieve, it's a gift you receive. And sometimes we find gifts a bit confusing. I don't know if it's because like me, you might've gone to Santa's Grotto as a child and you kind of go in and you sit down and Santa asks you these questions. He says, have you been good this year? And you know that actually you haven't been good for 365 days of the year but you really want a present and so you say yes and then you get your present and then you come away feeling a bit kind of conflicted about the whole thing. And I wish I could go back now. I wish I'd had the presence of mind then. And when Santa said, have you been a good boy this year? I would say, no. But let's be honest, Santa, neither have you. It's hard. Life is complex. It's hard to be good for 24 hours, for a whole day, let alone to be good for 365 days a year. And even if I could, Santa, even if I could be good for that long, I'm not sure that that's the point of life. I feel like I was made for more than mere morality. And while we're on it, Santa, if Christmas is about anything, it's about grace. And grace is about an undeserved gift, an undeserved present. So it doesn't really matter if I've been good or bad. What really matters is if I'm willing to receive the gift that's offered to me. And on balance, Santa, I am. So give me my present. Christmas doesn't mean you can have a gift if you've been perfect. That's not good news. You don't give gifts to people because they've never made a mistake. You give gifts to people because you love them. And in all the chaos and confusion and challenge of this life, God has given Jesus for us. And it's when you encounter Jesus, when you draw close to Jesus, when you place your trust in Jesus, that you receive joy. Joy that comes almost from a different place. Joy that's stronger than the storms of life. Joy that survives the struggles. Joy that enables you to stand firm, even when you're facing very real fears. Deep, overflowing joy. Because Jesus has come for you to save you, to give himself for you because he loves you. Amen.
let's take a moment to pray and to respond to what the Holy Spirit may have been saying to each of us as we've sung and listened to the readings, as we've listened to Stephen. Let's take a moment to pray and respond. Jesus is with you. The baby grew up. He died for each of us, was raised to life. He's alive and he's here right now with you. Wherever you are, I want to pray a prayer that each of us can echo in the silence of our hearts, inviting Jesus to be born in us today. If you'd like to pray, just pray in your heart along these lines. Say, thank you, Jesus that you love me, that you came to this earth to live, to die, to be raised to life, and you are with us this Christmas. I want to leave behind the rubbish in my life, the things that spoil a relationship with you. If anything comes to your mind, ask God to forgive you. Christmas is a time about forgiveness, redemption, then if there's anyone that you need to forgive, this is a great moment. Picture that person in front of you and say to them, I forgive you. And then just receive God's forgiveness. Jesus died to make forgiveness possible. Say, Lord, thank you that you died on the cross for me. I now receive your forgiveness and I put my trust in you. Faith is about trust. I trust you with my life. Please come into my heart by your Holy Spirit. Be born in me today. I just allow the Spirit of God to fill you with his love, his joy, his peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It may be that you'd like to explore some of the things we've been looking at in this service. If so, we would love to invite you to Alpha, which is a great place to explore the big questions of life and the Christian faith. It starts on Wednesday the 6th of January online and you can register on our website. We'd also love to give you a little booklet called Why Christmas, which has a very similar prayer to the one Nikki just prayed. You can find this link below. And before our final blessing, I'd love to invite you to join us next Sunday for our alternative carol service. And also to let you know about Love Christmas Initiative. We're joining with thousands of other churches across the UK to deliver a million Christmas boxes of hope and love, packed with wonderful gifts to the most vulnerable in our society. Whether for the old people who are isolated, the vulnerable, the homeless, people in prison, refugees, or many others in need, we want them to know we are with them and that they are loved this Christmas. This is all thanks to your generosity. As the more people give, the more boxes we can deliver. If you'd like to support Love Christmas, then the details of how you can give are coming up on the screen. Please join us as we love our neighbours and help them to love Christmas more than ever this year. And now the blessing. Go in peace. The wisdom of the wonderful counsellor guide you. The strength of the mighty God defend you. The love of the everlasting Father enfold you. And the peace of the Prince of Peace be upon you. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith, and meaning from the comfort of your own home. No filters, just honest discussion. Alpha Online is made up of a film series which are designed to create conversations around topics such as how can I pray? Who is Jesus? What is the meaning of life? Why is there suffering in this world? Each week you will have an opportunity to watch a short video and then chat about it with a small group of people who like you are also grappling with life's big questions and no question is off limits. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha Online.